Hicks. Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined, brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. A gambling ship, Nick. That sounds exciting. You call losing your money exciting, Patsy. You're right, but I'm not going out there for the fun of it. Oh, I suppose you'd rather go fishing. I certainly would. And I'd rather fish for fish than for a murderer. Now for the case of the missing piano player. Today's thrilling Nick Carter adventure. Our story begins in the roulette room of a gambling ship, which is anchored off the Atlantic coast. Several customers are gathered about the large roulette table as the croupier prepares to spin the wheel. No more bets, ladies and gentlemen. That's all. No more bets. Hey, Bill, stop playing a minute. Yeah, Gus? No more music. The boss wants to see you in his office. Oh, okay, Gus. What's wrong? Come on. What's wrong, Gus? Can't you tell me? The boss will talk about that. Inside, Bill. Okay. Hello, Edwards. You... You wanted to see me, Mr. Zimmon? Yes. Why haven't you been following my orders? I was hired to play the piano, not the customers. You know what you were supposed to do when you took the job. I took the job because I needed it, but I've been thinking it over, and I've decided that a crooked roulette wheel is not in my line. You knew the wheel was fixed when we hired you. That's why you was hired. Now you're welching on the deal. And I want to know why. Well, I got a sister to take care of. What's that to us? Just this, Mr. Dutch Zimmerman. I've decided to quit. Don't you know nobody quits this racket once he's in it? I just want to get out of here. My sister's a swell gal, and I just can't afford to stay around here and end up behind the eight ball. You're behind the eight ball right now, Edwards. And it's mighty black, too. I don't want to... take care of things. Sure, boss. Sure. Well, well, what are you going to do? You're going for a little walk, Edwards. A little walk with Gus. Up to the bow of the ship. Patsy. Yes, Nick? You about finished with our case histories? Uh, don't worry, Mr. Carter. They'll all be nicely typed and ready for filing before you go away on your vacation. <laughs> I don't see why I had to go... Oh, someone at the door, Nick. I'll go. Thanks, Patsy. Homicide, Sergeant Matheson. Oh, hello, Matty. Oh, hi, Nick. What cooks? Me. I'm off for a vacation. Fishing. Yeah? Just called to say that Patsy will know where I am if anything develops that requires my attention. <laughs> it won't. Where are you going? Sandy Point. I uh, wish I was going along with you. So do I, Matty. Well, I'll be seeing you. Okay, Nick. Have fun. Nick, this is Mr. John Redden. How do you do, Mr. Redden? Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Mr. Redden has a problem, Nick. I told him you were just about to go away, but he's very anxious to talk to you about one of your pet hates, gambling. Oh, is that so? Well, just what's your difficulty, Mr. Redden? A gambling ship. I've lost a great deal of money on it. But why come to me about that? I'm convinced that the roulette wheel on the ship is crooked. If I can prove it, that is, if I can get you to prove it, I may be able to get back some of my losses. Sorry I can't help you, Mr. Ridden, but I'm off on a fishing trip. Mr. Ridden, if you're convinced that this gambling ship is crooked, why don't you go to the police? Well, in the first place, I can't afford the publicity, and in the second place, the police would merely raid the ship and shut it down, and I'd have no chance to get back my losses. Oh. Um, Mr. Carter. Yes? I've heard about your big hobby, your downtown boys' club. Well... If you look into this matter for me, I'm prepared to make a very substantial donation to your boys' club. What? Oh, Nick, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Where is this gambling ship? Anchored off the coast, reached by launch from the town of Thompson's Cove. Thompson's Cove? Why, that's only a few miles from Sandy Point, where I'm going for my week of fishing. Well, then... Tell you what can... I'll do, Mr. Redden. I'll take a look at this gambling ship. If I find anything, I'll take a case. I can't ask for any more than that. 
But uh, just why do you think this gambling ship isn't on the level? Mr. Carter, I'm convinced the roulette wheel is fixed. Trouble is, I don't know just how it's done. That kind of evidence isn't very satisfactory in a courtroom. Well, if we can just find out how it's done, I can confront the gambling syndicate with the facts and... Get back your money and close up the ship. That's it. Well, Mr. Reardon, I'll take a run out there and have a look. Suggest you meet me at the hotel at Thompson's Cove in a couple of days, and I'll give you my decision. I'll do that, Mr. Carter. <clears throat> and I'm grateful to you. Well, don't be grateful yet. Good day, Mr. Reardon. Good day, Mr. Carter. Miss Bowen? Goodbye, Mr. Reardon. Well, Patsy, you better hurry up and finish those case histories. Oh, Nick, why do I have... I'll need you with me when I go out to that gambling ship tomorrow night. Well, why didn't you say so? That's different. You mean we don't have to pay to ride on this launch? No. The gambling ship provides free transportation to its guests. Oh, oh. Hey, there are some prosperous-looking people on board, Nick. They have to be to play roulette. Nick? Hmm? You see that young girl over by the rail? She can't be over 18. Hmm, pretty, too. I wonder why she's going out to the ship. She seems to be alone. You know, Patsy, I think it might be a good idea if you try to find her out. She's not the gambling type at all. Right, Nick. I'll strike up a conversation with her as soon as we get aboard. Nick, I want you to meet Miss Edwards, Mr. Carter. How do you do, Mr. Carter? Delighted to meet you, Miss Edwards. I noticed you coming out on the launch. Well, it's always flattering to be noticed by a pretty girl. Thank you. Miss Bowen and I were both wondering why a girl like you would be visiting a place like this alone. See that piano over there in the roulette room? Yes. My brother Bill played that piano until last night. Oh, did he lose his job? I don't know. You don't know? No. All I know is he didn't come home last night. You see, we live together in Thompson's Cove. I have a job there. And you've come out here to find out what happened to your brother? If I can, Mr. Carter. I'm terribly worried. Well, possibly I can be of some assistance. Oh, if you only could. I think the first step in that direction is the present piano player. I'll go over and have a chat with him. No more bets. No more bets. Why'd you stop playing the piano so abruptly, son? Oh, I don't like that number much. How about playing June's Best Not All Over? Oh, I don't like that one either. You're new here, aren't you? Kind of. What happened to the former piano player? The one who played here last night? I got no idea. Any idea who could tell me about the other piano player? Say, why don't you mind your own business? Why, I'm just curious to find out. Why do you stop right in the middle of a tune? Listen, Nosey, you come out here to gamble or talk to me? I like to see what Mr. Makes... Carter. Yes, who are you? Never mind. But you know my name. Sure, so does the boss. Matter of fact, the boss wants to see you in his office right away. I'll be delighted to meet the boss. As a matter of fact, I was just about to ask someone for a proper introduction. Okay, follow me. I'll introduce you good and proper. Here's Mr. Carter, boss. Hello, Nick Carter. How do you do? I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Simmons, the name. Dutch Simmons. Glad to know you. And your friend here? My name's Gus. Uh, Gus Jones. Well, gentlemen, now that we're acquainted... Quarter, I want to know what you're doing on this ship. Isn't my money as good as any other suckers? I don't like that crack, Carter. This is an honest ship. I never heard of a gambling ship that was honest. How would you know whether or not we're honest? You haven't been gambling. We spotted you the minute you got aboard. And we know you're a private eye giving us the once-over. Who are you working for? Why, you should know that it's unethical for me to divulge the name of a client. That's a laugh. A private dick talking about ethics. Some of us are on the level. By the way, who are your two girlfriends? One is my assistant, Miss Bowen. 
And the other is a Miss Ethel Edwards, whose brother played the piano in your roulette room until last night. Oh, yeah. Bill Edwards. Nice kid. What happened to him? How should I know? He didn't go home last night. Strange, a youngster should just vanish. So you're working for the kid's sister? Could be. Well, you're entirely too inquisitive, Mr. Carter. And if I ever see you on the ship again, maybe you'll vanish, too. Tough, aren't you? Tough enough to handle you. Gus. Yeah, boss? Take Carter and his assistant and his new girlfriend to the next launch. Okay. And see that they get back to shore. That was quite a shit. Yeah. Fantastic, isn't it? The way people flock to a place like that just to lose their money. My brother Bill says they do a big business. Expensive layout, all right. Now we've got to figure out how to get back there. Miss Bowen and I have been barred. Barred? Uh-huh. Why? Miss Edwards, I'm a private detective, and Miss Bowen is my assistant. Oh. I'm investigating something on the ship for a client. But when I heard about your missing brother, I decided I'd look into that, too. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Hope you can find out what's happened to him. I will, if it's at all possible. And I think I'll start by having a chat with the pilot of this launch. Oh, we better wait for you back here, Nick. All right, Patsy. It'll only be a moment. Okay. Nice night, Skipper. Nice enough. Suppose you sometimes get rough weather. Sometimes. What do you do when it gets really tough? Don't run. But how do the customers get back and forth to the ship, then? They don't. Oh. And I suppose you decide if the ship will be open for business each evening. Yeah, that's about it, mister. Oh. I should think the owners of the ship would certainly value your services. Not too much. I've been working here for more than a year and got no raise yet. Oh? Well, how about the men who work on the ship? Do the bosses treat them pretty well? Financially, I mean? I wouldn't know, mister. You know somebody back there on the ship? Just a kid who plays the piano. Who's that? Bill Edwards. <laughs> nice kid. Haven't seen him in a couple of days. You mean he didn't come back with you last night? No, he didn't. And he usually writes... Say, why are you asking me all these questions? Thanks, Skipper. See you again. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. What, what, what can I take a look? Well, Nick, learn anything? Miss Edwards, the pilot tells me your brother didn't return to shore last night. Unless he swam. But Bill isn't a very good swimmer. And he wouldn't try to swim ashore. It's too far. That's what I'm afraid of, Patsy. He's dead, Mr. Carter. Oh. I just know it. I had a oh, feeling... Oh, don't try, Ethel. Well, we don't know what's happened to him yet. Oh, Mr. Carter, you said you'd help me. And I will. <laughs> I'm going through with this investigation now, no matter what happens. casual look into a possible gambling swindle on Nick's part suddenly turns into a murder investigation. Or is it murder? We'll see in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the missing piano player. Today's Nick Carter adventure. It is the following morning. Nick is in John Reardon's hotel room at Thompson's Cove, where Reardon has come to hear Nick's first report. Mr. Reardon... That gambling ship is run by a group of dangerous men. I thought so. They warned me not to return to the ship, or I'd vanish. Well, why? Because I think I may be on the track of a murder. Murder? That's right. A young piano player named Bill Edwards. I remember him. Why? Why, I liked his music. Ah. Well, this kid was playing the piano in the roulette room until the night before last. Then he vanished. How do you know? Miss Bone and I met his sister on the launch going out to the ship. And? From what she told us, Mr. Reardon, young Bill Edwards is a prisoner on that ship. Or dead. Have you notified the police? No, because I'm not sure of anything yet. Well, in the meantime, how about that roulette wheel? Is it crooked? Is it fixed? Shouldn't be at all surprised. After my conversation with Mr. Dutch Zimmon and his pal Gus. I also think it may have something to do with the piano. Piano, eh? Yes. Right now, my main problem is getting back to the ship. And how do you intend to do that? I've decided to take your case. Good. Very good. But I'm afraid it's going to cost you some extra money for a bribe. 
How much? Possibly 500, possibly 1,000. That's nothing compared to what I've lost out there. Agreed. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Your call, please. Thompson's Cove, 7386, extension 8. 7386, extension 8? Right. One moment, please. What are you doing, Carter? Calling the ship. Phone number was on the guest card I got from this hotel. The extension I recall from Dr. Uh, Mr. Dutch Zimmons' phone in his office. Hello? Hello? Is Gus there? This is Gus. Who's this? This is Nick Carter. Nick Carter? What the... Gus, how'd you like to pick up an extra 500? For what? Thought that for $500, you'd see that I got back on that ship. That's a tough thing to arrange, Carter. Boss don't like you. I can't guarantee what had happened. All right. How about a 1000 Okay. It's a deal. But I won't promise what'll happen after you get aboard. I'll worry about that. Just meet me in Curran's Bar and Grill in Thompson's Cove this afternoon at 4. Have another drink, Gus? Might as well. What's the matter? You ain't touched yours. I will later. Waiter? Yeah? Another of the same. Yeah, coming up. <sighs> this booze sure tastes funny. Just your imagination. Gus, what do you know about Bill Edwards? Nice kid. Good piano player, too. It's too bad. What happened to him? He disappeared. Where? Isn't he somewhere on the ship? Here you are, mister. Oh, Here thanks, waiter. Right. Well, Gus, drink hearty. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> what happened to Bill Edwards, Gus? Bill Edwards? Yes. Where is he? He's dead. Where? Got funny tasting booze in this joint. How did Bill Edwards die, Gus? Where's his body? There was an old anchor on the bow of the ship. Been there for years. Ain't there now. We had to use it. Yeah. We used it. So that's the answer. Huh? Thank you, Gus. You've helped a lot. Homicide, Sergeant Matheson. Hello, Matty. Nick. Nick, where are you? Thompson's Cove Hotel. Matty, can you come out here right away? What's up? Thought you were on a vacation. Been interrupted by a murder, and I need a little police cooperation, and fast. Can do, Nick. So happens I know the police officers out there very well. Fine. Can you come right out? Sure. Things are quiet here in town. Thanks, Matty. And be sure to wear your old clothes. Why? I've arranged a fishing expedition for you. Mmm. Big crowd here tonight, Nick. Yes, but it's amazing the way people like to get rid of money. Good evening, Tex. Ah, you here again? This is Miss Bourne. Hi. Hi. I enjoy your playing very much. Thanks. Miss Bourne and I were wondering why you don't use the entire keyboard. I don't get you. You never seem to play in the extreme bass or the extreme treble. With such a fine instrument, it's a shame not to use the whole keyboard. <laughs> why don't you two go away and play games? told you to stay off this ship, Carter. Oh, hello, Dutch. Oh, this is my assistant, Miss Bone. How do you do? Carter, this thing you feel in the middle of your back is a gun. That's what I thought. Start walking to my office. Um, mind if I come along? You stay here. I'm going to have a little talk with your boyfriend, alone. I guess you're not wanted, Patsy. See you later. All right, Nick. I'll be waiting for you. You were a fool to come back, Carter. I warned you. I remember, Dutch. You just said if I ever came back here, I'd vanish. Like Bill Edwards. That's what you're going to do. 
Yeah? Yeah. Open that door. Ah, come in, Mr. Carter. Mr. Reardon? Yes. Close the door, Dutch. Sure, Reardon. And no sudden moves, either of you. I've got you both covered. I wouldn't want any trouble. Well, that is certainly an unexpected turn of events. We'll see what happens next in just a moment. And now for the conclusion of the case of the missing piano player. Today's adventure with Nick Carter... We pick up our story where we left off, as Reardon says to Dutch and Nick... No sudden moves either of you. I've got you both covered. I wouldn't want any trouble. What's the idea, Reardon? Why the gun? Looks like he's gone screwy, Dutch. Shut up, Gus. I'll do the talking. Reardon, what are you doing here? This is my office, Carter. Our office. So your boys are partners in this racket. Nice deduction, Carter. I wondered how long it would take for you to come out in the open, Reardon. But why the gun? Gus and Dutch are going to do some explaining. So you hired Carter. Correct. I hired him to check up on you two. Why, you... Now, perhaps you'll tell me why you've brought Carter in here at the point of a gun. He's too nosy. Been asking too many questions. He knows too much. That's right. He knows too much about a crooked roulette for you. You mean to say that this smart aleck has been telling you... Let's listen to what Carter has to say, Dutch. Speak up, Carter. Gladly, Mr. Reardon. At first, inasmuch as you seem to know Dutch so well, would you be good enough to tell him to take that automatic out of my spine? You heard him, Dutch. Drop the gun on the floor. You'll be sorry for this, Reardon. Thanks. Well, Carter, how about that roulette wheel? It's fixed. That's a lie. Prove it. Quiet, both of you. All right, Carter. Prove it. You'll take that piano apart, you'll find the answer. There are wires under the rug, from the piano to the roulette wheel. As the wheel starts spinning, the piano starts playing. At a signal from the croupier, the piano player, who faces the croupier, stops playing abruptly. You're crazy, Carter. Go ahead, Carter. I notice that the pianist never touches the extreme treble or bass keys except when he stops playing. Then he does press a certain key at one end or the other. A key in the bass for black, a key in the treble for red. It's as simple as that, Reardon. So much for the mechanics. What else? This fact should also be of interest to you. Some of the customers are very pally with the croupier, and they're always the same customers. Listen, Carter, you... And these customers walk away from that table with some handsome winnings. Winnings in which you do not share, Reardon, but in which Dutch and Gus do. Reardon, are you going to believe this bum, Carter, or us? I'm going to believe Carter. Carter doesn't lie. All right, Reardon, what are you going to do about it? Just this, Dutch. I'm going to dissolve our partnership here and now. Hey, Dutch, he's going to... What's the idea of knocking me over, Carter? You don't want to be a killer, too, Reardon. Don't move any of you. Oh, oh. oh, hi, Maddie. It's good to see you. You all right, Nick? Right as rain. What's oh. the score, Nick? My client here decided to become a killer, so I tackled him and the shots went wild. What's this all about, Carter? Why are the cops? It's about a murder. Maddie? Yeah? Did you and the local police find that anchor? We did, Nick. Under the bow of this ship. With young Bill Edwards' body tied to it. There are your killers, Maddie. Dutch Zimmerman and Gus Jones. Nice going, Nick. Take him away, boys. You can't take me. Hey, this guy's crazy. And if the you... bullets you guys pumped into young Bill Edwards before you dropped him over the side don't finish putting you in the hot seat, I'll turn in my badge. Let's go. Oh, well, Nick, another case history to type. Just as I had everything in the office cleaned up and ready for filing. I'll give you something to do while I catch some fish. Oh, you. Oh, you know, Nick, you haven't told me how you knew where to find Bill Edwards' body. I'll need the facts for the file. Scopolamine, Patsy. Huh? Scopolamine. It's a truth serum. Uh, the kind of stuff the Germans used to get information out of their prisoners during the war. Uh, I don't follow you. You recall I had a date with Gus in a bar? Yeah. Well, scopolamine is a drug that makes a man unable to avoid telling the truth. I put some of the drinks I bought for him. Oh. Then I asked him about young Edwards. The minute he mentioned the anchor, I knew the answer. I called the local police. When they dragged the bottom under the bow of that ship, they found what they were after, unfortunately. And you found more than you bargained for. Yes, very true, Patsy. I realized that Reardon had a little private grudge to settle as soon as he recognized the name of Bill Edwards. Uh-huh. But murder. Huh. That's something more than we bargained for. Well, now that that's settled, I suppose you're going back to Sandy Point. Right, Patsy. Back to Sandy Point and some fishing. And this time, I hope to catch nothing but fish. (laughs) 
Nick Carter, Master Detective, produced and directed by Jock McGregor. Lon Clark is starred as Nick, with Charlotte Manson featured as Patsy. Matty is played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Bryce Disk, Jr. Original music is played by George Wright. This is Bob Martin. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.